What's up guys, this is Jim with Awaken TCG, bringing you guys an OP07 video today. Today we are going to be talking about the deck and leader I am most looking forward to in OP07, and that, as you can see on screen, is going to be none other than the new Black Rob Lucci leader. A um, little bit of background, upon first seeing this leader, I thought his effect was very lame, um, really vanilla, and just not very fun. Um, and I was not looking forward to it at all. I actually played the original Black Lucci leader back in OP03. That was back when Whitebeard was the best deck and Black Lucci was actually a decent matchup into it. I had a ton of fun uh, in set three with that deck um, and also just uh, probably my best competitive performance. I don't enter that many online regionals or in-person regionals, but that was probably the best I performed. I got a top 64 with the Black Lucci. I'm not too much into the competitive stuff. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm pretty good, but I don't, you know, I don't go all in. I have other stuff going on in my life. I just don't have time to dedicate like that. But I, that was definitely the most fun I've had on the deck, um, and I it really just flowed, and I really enjoyed the list. Um, and upon seeing this guy, I kind of thought it was just a downgrade. But upon seeing these lists and watching some gameplay and understanding how this leader works, I think this new Rob Lucci leader is the best that uh, the CP archetype has ever been. Um, and I just think it looks really fun and really powerful. And we're just gonna go over a couple lists here and look at the matchup spread. And then at the end, gonna watch a quick game and just see how this deck is played. Um, so pretty much here, this list is running all the great black stuff with eight drop Morias, the four drop Rebecca's, the four drop Luchis, your Sabos, um, stuff like that great eruptions this card's going to get removed but I, instead of these great eruptions i would like to run for me i i want to run the the cp9 stage the um nes lobby that minuses two every turn that card looks really good and really uh strong into a meta where yellow is one of the best colors in the game so really looking forward to that uh this list in particular guys it actually got top eight at a flagship so this is one two three four for this is seven rounds straight of victory against a RP Law, three Sokka's, a Lucia Moria, and another Sokka. So this deck performed um, very impressive and a very, very strong deck at that. And I think the most enticing part about this deck for me, despite the fact that I'm, I'm already a black player, I love black, I kind of uh, got off of it when Sokka and Moria started getting popular. Um, you know, just because I don't really love playing the most played deck, but I think this will uh, black is gonna kind of stop being that, especially in OPO seven when Lucy is banned. Um, but back to my point, I think this deck is gonna be awesome because it has a fantastic matchup into NL. A lot of people I've seen, even in our comments on one of our recent videos, complaining about the new NL leader. It is extremely oppressive and extremely strong. If you want a leader that has a great matchup in the NL. This is your guy. So we have a list right here. Um, sorry, not a list. So we actually have a matchup spread right here provided by this fantastic YouTuber right here. I will have the uh, the link to his YouTube channel in the description. Um, basically going over the matchup chart for Black Lucci in OP07. And from the looks of it, um, as you can see there, the double circle is going to be heavily favored to win the matchup, um, followed by the normal circle being favored, line being even, triangle being slightly disadvantaged, and then the X being very disadvantaged. Um, so as you can see, we have right here, uh, extreme advantage in NL. This is an amazing matchup, and as someone that hates playing to an L, into an L and losing to an L, um, to have one of the leaders I'm looking most forward to have a good matchup to him is just really awesome. So if you guys don't like an L and you like black, but you don't want to play soccer or Moria, I think this is a great deck for you. Um, it does have a bad, uh, slightly losing matchup, or no, sorry, this is a very bad matchup into black and yellow Luffy. However, I don't really think that deck is extremely popular. I know a lot of people are going to be trying Bonnie, so this leader is uh, advantageous into Bonnie and into RP Law, which is also kind of an obnoxious deck that I would rather not deal with. 
Um, and then we have Mora, Moria and Nami. You don't know how too, how common those are going to be in LP07, but it's going to be a slight disadvantage there. And then with Boa and Yamato, two very, very strong decks, you're going to have a very, very strong advantage into. So very good matchup spread, especially into this OP07 meta that we're looking to go into, where apparently after Sokka drops, NL is going to be king, which means this is going to be one of our best options against it for sure. So if you do not like an L, yeah, hop on this deck. Uh, cannot wait till it's on sim and I get to try it out. But let's go ahead and see what this deck can do. So another YouTuber here, we are going to have them linked in the description as well. Another great Japanese YouTuber that uploads fantastic gameplay. We're going to go ahead and watch this match. This is a great representation of how Luchi just absolutely demolishes an L. And let's go ahead and break it down play by play. So Luchi going to be going first here and playing nothing on one. Unfortunately, no Spandam Searcher and Nell also going to follow it up with nothing on two. Will probably be a pretty common start. Luchi going to swing eight, take a life and start to building that trash. Fortunately, Nell did not get a trigger here. And Nell uh, going to pass on four dawn. Looks like we're going to go for the starve strategy here, which is pretty interesting. I didn't think we really did that anymore, but maybe it is correct into Luchi. I'm going to put one on lead swing six. And it will obviously take that as we trash two with a leader effect again. Then I'm going to play four for a Rebecca and then just most likely grab back that 2k and play nothing out as in I will probably just swing into it. I'm going to play the Shirahoshi here. Not a lot to play. I don't know the exact most common lines for an L, but from the list I've seen, you run a lot of big bodies. So on turns like this, it might be a bit awkward before you get to your eight, nine, ten Don turns. Um, Going to trash a couple cards there and pass back to Luchi. Not, probably wanting to keep that life pretty high if we're trying to KO things with Yamato. Gonna swing six again with Luchi. Going to trash two again. And now going to take, really looking for these triggers. And gonna look at the trash right now for this trigger. Not sure what trigger would be, we'd be con contemplating for that. Um, it's going to be the new six cost event trigger. Not actually 100% sure what that does, but Luchi going to go ahead and play an NES Lobby followed by a Khalifa, which is actually not a great start for this deck. Um, obviously, there's not really anything on board we can remove. So maybe uh, one of the best options right now, just kind of cycling, looking through our deck, getting ready to remove these big bodies, which is what this deck is good at. Katakuri going to play that. Uh, sorry, NL going to play that Katakuri, putting Shiroshi out of the top of the life and not swinging once again. Don't know if I 100% agree with this strategy, but I'm assuming this player knows what they're doing. Luchi gonna swing five and trash two from the top once again, just activating that Shirahoshi trigger. And now gonna take it, knowing that there's a very, very low chance um, we can even take their final life this turn. Gonna trash two with that Shirahoshi again, and then we are going to spend um, nine, it looks like, for the Stussy. And with that card, you can just KO whatever you want, which is one of the reasons this is a fantastic matchup in Duanel. They can play these big drops. You can follow it up with a Stussy for nine, swing six, and literally just blow it up for one um, for free. It is completely insane. And L now on 10. If we do have an ace here, this is probably the best scenario for us to drop it. Really, really strong card. And then L's actually going to choose to start swinging at leader. We have starved long enough and realized that it is probably not going to work. We're just going to block that with Rebecca before it gets removed. And then going to follow it up with another Katakuri that's going to put that Shirahoshi back in the top of life. Now, Luchi on 8 Dawn once again here. If we do have another Stussy in hand, we unfortunately don't really want to play it because we would have to KO the other Stussy on board. Going to swing 5. And NL is going to take here, knowing that if you do want to swing with Stussy, we just get a free leader effect skill. That's Shiroshi now having gone off three times now. Really, really strong. And then we'll activate the Ineos Lobby, bringing Katakuri down to five, since we use leader effect as well. Nice thing to KO on five Dawn, but there is definitely something we can KO at with three. And there it is. So we're putting it down to three. Uh, and another so we're putting it down to one. And then we drop a Moria, bringing out a Rebecca, and Rebecca bringing out a, sorry, no, a Rebecca and a Spandam. 
Spandam, I'm gonna add, look at top three and we're gonna grab that new Great Eruption for CP9. And then going to play out the Spandine with Rebecca, which is one of the strongest parts about this deck because you can actually turn that into a Luchi from Trash like you saw he did just there. Spandine going to grab a four cost or less CP card from Trash and play it in place of himself at the cost of putting two from your Trash at the bottom of the deck. So Rebecca basically playing Luchi there, which is another insanely powerful thing about this deck. And that looks like in a swing six at Luchi, we'll give them a 1k and then they'll just play Yamato to KO that there. Luchi now at two life and we're not, um, sorry, NL now at two life and we are not in a fantastic spot to end the game. NL has about 1 million cards in hand and two life still, which means they have infinite life. So looks like we are probably just gonna swing five at lead here. Anyway, Stussy is going to swing at nine and now we'll definitely take that. No real reason to give them any counter out of hand and going to get another Shirahoshi. Just constantly building that hand, which is definitely really annoying. There's a ton of new triggers that are really good for a Nell. That are the reason this deck is uh, kind of a problem. <laughs> um, going to trash those two there, which really probably have no use at the moment in time. We'll activate any Lobby, minusing the most likely Yamato by two. Now at four, and we will play the Moria replacing our sewer that we just played with a Rebecca. Oh, looks like we actually chose to play out a Luchi and putting three at the bottom, going to KO that Yamato now, which is the power of this deck. Every big body they're playing is getting removed and you are developing bodies at the same time. We now have a board with a Stussy and two Morias and a Luchi, unfortunately going to remove that Luchi with the Yamato there. But with Tendon right now, um, we can definitely force cards out of NL's hand. Looks like that's what we're going to try to do. Rob Lucci going to swing 6, forcing out a 2k. Stussy going to swing a 9. Um, looks like NL got a trigger there, debating whether we use it or not. Asking how many cards are in the trash. And going to choose to use that Onami. And it looks like we're going to KO the Rebecca there which is completely fine. We really don't need it at this moment in time, especially if we're gonna remove a, the Yamato right now, which I don't think we're gonna do, but just developing a blocker there is going to ensure that all of our big bodies are pretty much safe. We're gonna swing nine again, and Anel knows that you pretty much need to counter out of one of these, or it is going to be a big problem because you're going to be at zero and if you don't have a heal, which um, looks like he does have the ace in hand, so he does. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But now we're going to swing nine after we have used our leader effect. And now definitely going to want to give us two 2Ks and a 1K if he does not want to go down to zero life right now. And going to choose to do that. Looks like we're actually going to give the plus 3K event plus another 2K going up to 10. So, NL now on 10 down again, most likely playing the ace and swinging into board this turn if I had to guess, but if that's all we're doing, it's going to be pretty easy to play around it. But yeah, looks like we're going to choose not to do that. Possibly attaching a lot onto the Yamato to just remove one of these bodies on board. Kind of a matching body for body, except we are consistently removing the bodies that NL uh, plays every turn on his side. So going to put, looks like four on Yamato, swinging a 13K to the Moria. Just gonna take that, probably have the counter in hand, but not worth giving it. And then going to play six for that, uh, I think it's called Rangkyaku, something like that, uh, is going to go ahead and KO another target. Anything is free for six to KO with that card as long as you're at one life with an L. Another insanely strong option that got added to this deck. So we're gonna swing nine with Stussy, and I was actually gonna counter out of that. And then activate leader effect there on our Moria swing. Now we probably wanna put them down to zero, which we are definitely gonna do, putting six and swinging 11. Yeah, no way, and I was getting out of this one with a triple ace in hand. Uh, thinking about it here, probably 
making our opponent think that we do have counter. Oh no, sorry, that was at the Yamato, 11 at the Yamato. So would have had to give all the counter out of hand if we wanna play around that. So gonna play the Rebecca into the Spandine once again. And then going to activate the Spandine effect. Just playing out a Luchi right now and getting a 6k body on board. We're actually going to, no, no, we will, will choose to play out the Luchi. And now we're gonna go five at the Spandine. And then develop that ace and swing at the Luchi, which will just warrant an easy block with Rebecca. So, and now kind of getting starved out, not gonna lie. Every time you develop a body, it is getting removed. And we are just devel developing our own things in return. Luchi gonna swing six at lead, probably minusing one to the ace. Gonna swing another nine, and then we'll actually play another Stussy. Going to KO that ace for free, which is pretty ridiculous and shows why this matchup is not an L favored. Um, and L gonna basically quickly play another ace. Looking at the trash, probably seeing how many 2Ks have been used. See if he wants to swing at either leader or the Moria here. Um, Cause if we do have the 2K in hand, it is a pretty easy counter, but he's actually gonna choose not to swing at all. Um, fearing that uh, the crack back into the ace will pretty much be the end of an L. So we're gonna swing nine at lead, gonna hit the Frankie here, which is one of the best triggers to get. Develops a body and draws a card. Another reason an L is so strong this set. Uh, we're actually gonna put one on Stussy it looks like and swing 10 and I'll be forced to take that to no trigger fortunately. Going to swing another nine. Looks like Anel has the counter in hand, but it would have to be everything in hand, and yeah. Going to give all of that. So just gonna swing with Luchi here. 6K, as we know there's no 2Ks since he just gave us three ones. Gonna hit the Beige, unfortunately a bit too late as we use the NES Lobby and then drop the Luchi. And going to KO the Frankie there and then play a Khalifa, getting rid of these two NES lobbies out of hand, which we just don't want to deal with anymore. Rob Lucci's still at five life, if you guys haven't noticed. Um, <laughs> and I've been trying to do board control, but unfortunately it's a bit futile, especially with two cards in hand right now and this board. There's really no winning this, so we're just gonna go seven. So we got no trigger there. Gonna actually choose to keep the Frankie in hand since we need the counter. Um, another trigger going to pop and KO the Khalifa, which is no big deal, and that is going to be the game. And that is going to be the video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Um, definitely an interesting one. Uh, just kind of wanted to make an all-encompassing video on OP07 Luchi and why I am excited for it. Really looking forward to this deck. Um, looks like the second coming of Black Luchi from OP03, which I just had a ton of fun with. So. Hopefully this can be uh, my introduction back into the competitive scene because I've mostly been playing off meta decks for the most part, but this is the first semi meta deck it looks like that I'm really looking forward to playing. So um, look forward to that guys in OP07. If you want to play Rob Lucci, let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you want me to do a deep dive on any other of these OP07 leaders just so you guys can check out what they've got in store and what impact they're going to make on the meta in OP07. But anyways, I'm going to head out of here guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I am out of here. Peace.